Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AW Dynamite review. Dynamite tonight was from the Motor Center in Portland, Oregon. And Dynamite tonight, I thought this show was very mediocre, in my opinion. Last week I did a watch along of uh, Dynamite, but went back to uh, reviewing the show tonight. But like I said, this was just a very mediocre show. But tonight on Dynamite, we had the AW World Championship on the line. MJF defending the title against Daniel Garcia, even though Jay White still has the AW World Championship that he stole from MJF. We had Darby Allen and Sting versus the Outrunners. This was Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. We had Swerve Strickland. He had taken on Penta El Zero Miedo. The Ring of Honor World Television Championship was on the line where Samoa Joe defended the title against Keith Lee. The Guns were in action. Austin Colton Gunn. And they have taken on the Bollywood Boys. And of course, the Bollywood Boys, they were once known as the Singh Brothers, you know, Jinder Mahal's uh, lackeys. We had Julia Hart versus Red Velvet. Red Velvet uh, making her return to Dynamite tonight. And the main event, we had Jay White versus Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe uh, has been on Dynamite, you know, in a while. So it's good to see Mark Briscoe uh, back in action tonight. But overall, very mediocre show this was. Uh, tonight. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. Dynamite opened up tonight, and we saw Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was backstage, and he was talking to MJF. So, MJF ended up addressing, you know, Bullet Club Gold. And then MGF was speaking to Adam Cole, who was on a TV. Adam Cole ended up telling MGF to take up Samoa Joe on his offer. So MGF ended up telling Adam Cole that he will handle Bullet Club Gold after he handles Danny Garcia. So Danny Garcia ended up appearing. MGF ended up revealing that he accepted the match tonight because he sees himself. And Daniel Garcia. And he wants to know if he will get the sports entertainer or the professional wrestler out of Daniel Garcia. So then we add Adam! Adam! Roderick Strong and the Kingdom. This was, of course, Mike Bennett, Matt Taven, and they have talking trash on MJF. Strong was offered some tips as Strong ended up calling himself a wrestling legend. Which that made me laugh. Roderick Strong, a wrestling legend? I mean, he's good in the ring, but he's nowhere near a wrestling legend as of now. Maybe in the future. So MJF ended up agreeing that he was a legend. But he's turned into a joke. So Roger Strong ended up saying that it is time to remind everybody who the hell he is. So that was basically that. But MGF, you know, talking to Adam Cole, saying that, you know, he does not need help and that he could defend the Ring of Honor World Tech Team Championship on his own at full gear. So, but it was a uh, decent opening to uh, Dynamite here. And then we had the first match of the night. MJF versus Danny Garcia. This was for the AEW World Championship. Of course, Jay White still has MJF's AEW World Championship that he stole from him. And this was a good match here. So as the match got underway, MJF wasted no time bringing Dan Garcia down to the mat. 
MJF started mocking uh, Danny Garcia's dance, you know, with the... And then Danny Garcia ended up bringing MJF down to the mat. And we had Matt Menard and Angel Parker end up stopping Danny Garcia. And they ended up reminding uh, Danny Garcia to be serious. MJF then ended up wanting a handshake from Danny Garcia. But Danny Garcia ended up slapping MJF's hand away. And MJF ended up poking Danny Garcia in his eye. And then... MJF end up in a by slam. MJF end up going back on Danny Garcia's arm. He slammed Danny Garcia down to the mat. He ended up going for the cover, and Danny Garcia ended up kicking out. Danny Garcia ended up driving MJF into the turnbuckles. Danny Garcia was then looking to go for a pile driver, and it got blocked by MJF. So Danny Garcia then slapped him. So. We had MJF end up dropping from the second turnbuckle onto Danny Garcia's arm. And MJF followed that up with a shoulder breaker. And then MJF ended up hitting the DDT to Danny Garcia. So MJF ended up going for the cover. And Danny Garcia ended up kicking out. So then as Dynamite came back from the commercial, Danny Garcia ended up taking MJF into the corner. And he ended up hitting a snap suplex to MJF, which MJF sold the hell out of that snap suplex. So Danny Garcia ended up going for the cover, and MJF ended up kicking out. So MJF ended up evading Danny Garcia in the corner, ended up hitting the double stomp on Danny Garcia's elbow. Later on, Danny Garcia ended up evading the salt of the earth by heading to the ropes. He ended up dodging a heat seeker, but MJF ended up catching Danny Garcia with a super kick. Danny Garcia ended up responding by dodging a Panama Sunrise from MJF. He ended up kicking out MJF's legs. And we had Danny Garcia. He was unable to get the pile driver on MJF. But we had uh, Danny Garcia end up going for the cover on MJF. And MJF ended up kicking out. Danny Garcia ended up going for the Dragon Tamer on MJF. But MJF countered that. He ended up hitting a Salt of the Earth. On Danny Garcia. So Danny Garcia end up tapping out. So there you go. MJF end up winning the match, retaining the AW World Championship. Post match, MJF end up celebrating his win. He extended his hand to Danny Garcia, but we had uh, Matt Menard and Angel Parker end up intervening. They end up keeping Danny Garcia from shaking MJF's hand. So MJF ended up running uh, the pair down. He ended up offering a sign of sportsmanship to Danny Garcia. But Matt Menard and Angel Parker once again kept Danny Garcia from shaking MJF's hand. So Menard, Parker, and Danny Garcia ended up leaving the ring. And so that was basically that. But overall, good match this was with MJF. And Danny Garcia, obviously, we all knew that MJF was going to retain the title. So, But MJF and Danny Garcia worked uh, well here uh, in the match. And then we had Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe ended up cutting a promo. And he ended up saying that he is ready to take on Jay White. And take the Switchblade's shot at the AEW World Championship. So that was that. And then we had Darby Allen and Sting versus the Outrunners, Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. This was a squash match. Do I really need to go over uh, what happened in this match? So Darby Allen and Sting won the match. Sting ended up locking in the Scorpion Deathlock on Turbo Floyd. Turbo Floyd tapped out, and that was that. Darby Allen and Sting ended up winning. Like I said, squash match this was. And obviously, we all knew that Darby Allen and Sting were going to win it. And I'm like, this is what you give Darby Allen and Sting to go up against? I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, like I said, squash match this was. Moving on. 
we saw Tony Schiavone, and he was interviewing uh, Timeless, Tony Storm, and the AEW Women's World Champion, Hikaru Shida. This interview was conducted earlier in the day. Tony Storm confirmed that she has requested an AEW Women's World Championship match against Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida then ended up asking, what happened? Tony Storm ended up blaming Hikaru Shida for it due to what happened at uh, All Out at Wembley Stadium. And that she wanted to be the first three-time AEW Women's World Champion. She kept saying Hikaru Shida happened again. So she became history. So Hikaru Shida ended up saying what will happen at Full Gear is what always happened. And she will retain the AEW Women's World Championship. And the contract for the match officially got signed. Tony Storm ended up attempting to use her shoe. And then Hikaru Shida ended up knocking the shoe out of uh, Tony Storm's hand. So that was basically that. And then we had Swerve Strickland versus Penta L. Zermiero. Decent match this was. It was revealed that Hangman Page was banned from ringside. You know, Hangman Page you know, wanted to get his hands on Swerve after what we saw two weeks ago on Dynamite where Swerve and Prince Nana invaded Page's house. So the match started off with Swerve end up going for Penta's mask. And Swerve ended up taking uh, early control of the match. He ended up sending Penta into the turnbuckle. And Swerve ended up focusing on Penta's hand. Both Swerve and Penta were exchanging chops to each other. And Swerve ended up bringing Penta back to the mat. And he was ripping away at Penta's tongue. Penta then ended up launching Swerve to the corner. He followed up with a backbreaker. Swerve ended up playing possum which allowed Swerve to counter Penta's dive, and he had to send Penta into the uh, ring steps. Swerve then ended up trying to dive out of the ring, but we had uh, Penta end up getting sent onto the ring apron, and he immediately bounced back to attack Swerve. Penta then delivered some chops outside the ring. Swerve ended up avoiding one of the chops as Penta ended up slapping the ring post. So both Penta and Swerve end up going back in the ring. They end up going back and forth with some moves. And they end up both dropping down after a double clothesline. So Penta then end up dropping Swerve into the ring apron. They end up heading back to the ring. And Penta end up hitting a diving foot stomp to Swerve. So Penta end up going for the cover. Swerve end up kicking out. So at the end of the match, Swerve end up landing a shot to the back of Penta's head, and then Swerve ended up hitting the stomp to Penta. Swerve ended up going for the cover. There you go. Swerve Strickland ended up winning the match. Post-match, Hangman Page ended up appearing. He had a chair in hand. He ended up delivering a chair shot to Swerve's back. And then security ended up coming out to separate Page and Swerve. But Page Ended up attacking security with the chair. Page then ended up launching Swerve off of the ramp. And Page then ended up sending Swerve through a table on the floor. And so Swerve was laid out after that spot. So that was that. But overall, decent match between Swerve and Penta here. And then we went backstage and we saw Jay White. Jay White ended up addressing what MJF had to say. And Jay White ended up telling MJF to just sit back and breathe. So pretty much that was that. And then we had Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. And Rene Paquette was talking with them. They end up bragging about having Paul White by their side. And the Young Bucks end up appearing. 
they have saying that they set up in a broom cupboard because there's no room in that locker room now with Jericho. So they pointed out that they started it. But Jericho ended up claiming that it was the four of them that started the company. And Matt Jackson ended up saying that he waltzed in and, and chased in a check. Jericho ended up saying that him and Omega are two of the greatest. And he thinks that they can beat the Young Bucks. And this led to uh, Matt Jackson setting up a match between them at Full Gear. So Jericho ended up adding that if they win, they get the guaranteed World Tag Team Championship shot. But Jackson ended up saying that if they win, the Golden Jets are no more. So Omega ended up saying that he doesn't want to wrestle them. But he's done this before and beaten them. So there you go. Full gear. Jericho and Omega versus the Young Bucks. You know, Jericho ended up saying that if him and Omega win, they are guaranteed an AEW World Tag Team Championship shot. And then Matt Jackson ended up saying that if they win, the Golden Jets are no more. So it should be a good match at full gear between uh, Omega, Jericho, and the Bucks. And then we had Samoa Joe versus Keith Lee. This is for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. And this was a good match here. Match started off with Keith Lee and Samoa Joe end up shaking hands. Both guys end up locking up. Samoa Joe end up raking Keith Lee's eyes. And that allowed Joe to nail a show tackle to Keith Lee. So Keith Lee ended up getting back up. He ended up nailing a show tackle to Joe. He knocked Joe down, and then he followed up with a series of punches in the corner to Joe. Joe fought back with a series of punches himself to Keith Lee. Keith Lee then left Frog uh, Samoa Joe and sent Samoa Joe out of the ring. So we had uh, Joe end up slowly getting up to his feet, and he ended up catching Keith Lee off guard. He ended up sending Keith Lee into the corner, and he ended up dropping Keith Lee down to the canvas. That's when Dynamite went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, Keith Lee was uh, in control of the match. He ended up wearing Samoa Joe down. And Keith Lee uh, responded uh, with a hard strike to Samoa Joe. So we had Keith Lee end up stopping a senton uh, from uh, Joe. He ended up taking Joe down with a massive German suplex, which sent Joe down to the canvas. So we had Keith Lee end up uh, delivering a pop-up power bomb to Joe. Keith Lee end up going for the cover, and Samoa Joe end up kicking out. Keith Lee then end up bringing Joe back to his feet. He lifted uh, Samoa Joe up, but Joe end up turning that into a rear naked choke, and then Joe locked in the Coquina clutch. Keith Lee was trying to fight out of the Coquina clutch, but. The, co the Coquina Clutch was locked in tight, and Keith Lee ended up passing out. So there you go. Samoa Joe ended up winning the match, retaining the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. Post-match, Joe ended up demanding the mic, and so he got on the mic. He talked about his hunger for the AW World Championship. So Samoa Joe ended up announcing that he is vacating. The Ring of Honor World Television Championship. Samoa Joe then laid the Ring of Honor World Te Television Championship down, and he up saying that the next gold he will hold is the AW World Championship, whether Max likes it or not. So that is what Samoa Joe had to say. Samoa Joe is focusing on the AW World Championship, but now that the Ring of Honor World Television Championship is vacated. What do you think they're going to do to crown a new Ring of Honor World Television Champion? I think that they are possibly going to do a tournament. I think a tournament will be good to crown a new uh, champion. So, we'll see what happens with that. But overall, good match between Samoa Joe and Keith Lee. And then we saw Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy was backstage, 
And he was saying that John Moxley is the only person he's thought about since he left him in a pool of his own blood. He kept saying that he picked up the pieces of the international championship that Moxley dropped. He kept saying now holding it, he doesn't feel the same as he has to beat Moxley to be the international champion. He knows he is. And at full gear, he will beat Moxley. So there you go. It's going to be Orange Cassidy versus Moxley for the international championship. You know, Orange Cassidy very co very confident that he will beat John Moxley. Should be a good match at full gear between th these two. And then we add the guns, Austin and Colton Gunn. They were accompanied by Juice Robinson, and they have taken on the Bollywood Boys. The Bollywood Boys. They were formerly known as the Singh Brothers when they were in WWE. You know, they were Jinder Mahal's uh, lackeys. And this was a quick match here. This match lasted one minute. So we had the guns end up pinning the 310 to Yuma, and they end up winning the match. Post-match, the guns end up getting on the mic. They end up running down MJF. And they were saying that MJF is a liar and that MJF isn't a generational talent. And that he's been telling sob stories. But unlike him, they've never been told no, as they're made for television. And the guns end up saying that they're about to be Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Because they are generational talents. So the guns end up pointing out MJF's only friends are the people on the other side of the guardrail. And that they hope that MJF picks one of the fat pieces of shit to be his partner. So that was basically what the guns had to say. But this match just lasted uh, one minute. The guns and the Bollywood boys. So then we went backstage. And we saw John Moxley. John Moxley uh, made his response to what Orange Cassie had to say. He kept saying that Orange Cassie doesn't even deserve to get to full gear. But if Cassidy can, it's good for him. Moxley ended up challenging for a fight the moment him and Orange Cassidy land in LAX. And then Wheelie Yuta started running down a hook. And that was basically that. And then we had a video package with Warlow. Warlow ended up saying that he promises it all comes to an end for MGF very soon. So Warlow, you know, was coming after uh, MJF. If you remember when he made his return, uh, he had MJF's name on, you know, the tape. So. Yeah, he wants to get his hands on MJF. And then we had Julia Hart versus Red Velvet. Red Velvet ended up returning to Dynamite tonight. She's been out of action for months. And this was a okay woman's match here. Match started off with Red Velvet dominating on Julia Hart with some hip tosses. And she started working over Julia Hart in the corner with some kicks and some body shots to uh, Julia Hart. Red Velvet started hammering down punches to Julia Hart. Julia Hart ended up escaping and pushed Red Velvet through the gaps in the turnbuckles, which that allowed Julia Hart to slam Red Velvet's head into the mat. So then Julia Hart ended up dumping Red Velvet out of the ring, and she ended up driving Red Velvet into the ring steps. So then we had uh, Julia Hart end up tripping Red Velvet up onto the canvas. And we had uh, Red Velvet end up fighting right back, sending uh, Julia Hart into the corner. And then Dynamite went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, Red Velvet was in control. The match started to fight back at Julia Hart. She had taken her down. And Red Velvet end up in a bulldog, which... Drove Julia Hart face first to the canvas. Julia Hart ended up heading to the ropes. And she got cut off by Red Velvet. And Red Velvet ended up in a standing moonsault. 
you know, which looked good. So Red Velvet ended up going for the cover. Julia Hart ended up kicking out. So Julia Hart ended up heading to the corner as Red Velvet was struggling to her feet. So Red Velvet ended up hitting Julia Hart across the back on the turnbuckle. She then ended up hitting a modified uh, econoclasm on Julia Hart. And she ended up going for the cover. And Julia Hart ended up kicking out. So at the end of the match, Julia Hart ended up climbing up top for a moonsault press. And she ended up hitting that moonsault press onto Red Velvet. Julia Hart ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Julia Hart ended up winning the match. Post-match, Julia Hart ended up continuing to attack Red Velvet. And Julia Hart was going to uh, lock in Heartless. And then out came Sky Blue. Sky Blue ended up getting into the ring. And her and Julia Hart ended up staring each other down. Chris Statlander and Will Nightingale also made their way into the ring. And then Julia Hart ended up walking away. And that was that. Just Julia Hart ended up staring uh, them down. So that was that. But overall, okay match between uh, Julia Hart and Red Velvet here. You know, it's good to see Red Velvet uh, back. And then we went backstage. And we saw RJ City. RJ City was shown with Mariah May. Mariah May is AW's newest signee. And I'm not familiar with Mariah May. Haven't seen you know her matches, but will be uh, cool to see how you know good she is in the ring here. You know when she has her first match. So Mariah May ended up saying that she's wrestled all over the world, and that she is excited to be in AW's women's division. She ended up also saying that she's a big fan of RJC's work. With timeless Tony Storm. And that she is the reason why she's here. As she's a big fan of timeless Tony Storm. There you go. So little you know, debut here for uh, Mariah May. You know, announcing that she is a AEW's new assignee. So we'll want to see how Mariah May is in the ring. When she has her uh, first match. Main event. Jay White versus Mark Briscoe. Jay White's shot at the AEW World Championship at full gear was on the line uh, in this match. If Jay White ended up losing, Mark Briscoe would be the one to face MJF for the AEW World Championship. And this was a good match here. Mark Briscoe you know, made his return. You know, to uh, Dynamite. It's been a while since we've seen Mark Briscoe on AEW television. It was good to see him back. So, the match got in the way with Jay White and Mark Briscoe end up blocking up. Briscoe end up catching Jay White off guard, forcing Jay White to leave the ring for him to take a breather. Jay White came back into the ring. He ended up going after Briscoe with some hard strikes. Briscoe then got back to his feet. He connected with a back suplex on Jay White, which sent Jay White into the canvas. So we had uh, Briscoe end up going for the cover, and Jay White end up kicking out. Briscoe then end up sending Jay White up on the turnbuckle, and Briscoe end up hitting a massive strike, which sent Jay White to the outside. And Briscoe hit a big dive on Jay White. So Briscoe ended up bringing Jay White back into the ring. He ended up going up to the top rope. Jay White ended up evading an attack by Briscoe. And then Jay White hit a DDT on Briscoe. Jay White then sent Briscoe out of the ring. And White distracted the referee. And Bullet Club Gold ended up attacking Briscoe. And Dynamite went to commercial. Then when Dynamite came back from the commercial, Briscoe was in control of the match. He started fighting back and then ended up getting taken down by Jay White. So Jay White 
end up bringing Briscoe up top. And Briscoe started fighting back. He had pinned a drop kick to Jay White. The crowd uh, through the match was behind uh, Mark Briscoe. So we had uh, strikes being exchanged between both guys. Briscoe delivered some forearms and some chops to Jay White. Jay White started fighting back. And then Briscoe ended up doing the same. So both guys were going back and forth with each other. So Briscoe ended up getting a kick to Jay White's gut. And then he ended up going for a neck breaker. And he ended up going for the cover on Jay White. But Jay White ended up kicking out. So we had Briscoe end up finding out of attack by Jay White for Fisherman's Buster. And we had Briscoe end up going for the cover. And Jay White end up kicking out. Briscoe then end up lifting up Jay White. Jay White ended up fighting out of that, and Jay White ended up hitting a dragon screw that ended up driving Briscoe's leg into the ropes. Briscoe ended up starting to fight back with a Death Valley driver, and then he connected with a froggy bow on Jay White. He ended up going for the cover, and Jay White ended up kicking out. So Briscoe was going to go for a Jay Driller on Jay, but Jay White ended up fighting out. He ended up pinning a Kiwi Crusher to Briscoe. He ended up going for the cover. And Briscoe ended up kicking out. So at the end of the match, we had Jay White end up taking Briscoe out with the Blade Runner. Jay White ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Jay White ended up winning the match. Post-match, MJF ended up coming out. MJF was... In the ring, he was behind Bullet Club Gold, and he up clearing out Bullet Club Gold from the ring. MJF then turned his attention to Jay White. So Jay White ended up evading a assisted punch by MJF, and then he ended up leaving the ring. MJF got on the mic. He ended up telling Jay White that playtime will be over at full gear when he beats Jay White to prove that he is the real world champion. MJF wanted to say that he's not just fighting for himself. He's fighting for Adam Cole and for everyone watching. MJF ended up saying that he isn't just a scumbag. He's their scumbag. So then the lights end up going out in the arena and we went backstage and we saw the four mechs asylums. And they were seen attacking the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Anthony Bowens was thrown through the glass window by uh, one of the assailants. And so the feed ended up coming to uh, someone wearing the devil mask. And then it went back to ringside. MGF ran out of the ring to go check on the acclaimed. So Samoa Joe ended up coming up to MGF. Samoa Joe taunted MJF saying that he's out of friends. Or is he? So Joe walked off and MJF was all concerned. He was looking around and then Dynamite went off the air. Overall, this was a good segment here. You know, MJF got on the mic saying that he'll prove that he is the real world champion when he beats uh, Jay White at full gear, and then still no explanation uh, with the uh, the mask, the silence, and who is behind the devil mask. Hopefully that will come into play, you know, real soon. But overall, Dynamite tonight, mediocre show it was. But anyways, that's it for the Dynamite review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all on Friday for SmackDown. So, see you all then.